I'm telling you, there is something about when you get in the presence of the Lord. Ah, oh, and it was absolutely beautiful in both sessions this morning. I'm going to tell you, I was so glad to be here today that I actually shaved my legs this morning. And you know, we don't do that kind of stuff. That's right, keeping it real. Let me tell you, we're going to keep it real because I can be silly and I can be serious. And we're going to walk right in with some silly because a merry heart does do good like medicine. And then we're going to get down to the gut of the message, which is always Jesus. Jesus. I love talking to Texas gals. And you know, in Texas, when a girl is about to say something she shouldn't, she'll usually begin it like this. I don't mean to be mean, but, and then she'll always end it with, bless her heart. Ha! In Texas, we shell our own peas and we shuck our own corn. A lot of us in here, we've dug potatoes, we've driven a tractor, and there's not a whole bunch we haven't done because we're bold, we're courageous. We are definitely known as different. I speak in a lot of different places, and they always say, oh, you're from Texas? Oh, you Texas people are different. We are different. One of the things that I really love about Texas is we, don't not, we not only love to eat at Cracker Barrel, we buy our clothes there. But by this age, our children expect for us to be quiet, serious, and sophisticated. Let's disappoint them today, <laughs> especially in this first session, because as I look around, what I see is a, is a lot of women who love Jesus, a lot of women who are waiting patiently to see what Jesus is going to do, and that makes me so excited. You know, as for me and my house, and I think it's for the rest of us, we will serve the Lord, we will salute the flag, we will stand for the national anthem, and we will kneel before the cross. Thank you, Lord. That's Texas for you. Woo! But what we're going to celebrate today is we're going to celebrate some of the things that matter. Love, laughter, life, but most of all, Jesus. And you're going to get a candid conversation gone full throttle with a little bit of yeehaw and a whole lot of truth. And if you're one of those people who wears false teeth, you might want to cup them. Because the last thing we want to see is it flying across the floor. But you know, when I look around at, at this group, what I think, because I try to evaluate what your age is, or at least the majority of you. Because if I can figure out what age you are, that's the style of humor that I'll use a lot of times. And as I'm looking around in here, what I see is a lot of women whose sentences begin like this. What was I going to say? Have I told you this before? Don't you let me tell you this again and again. That's usually, that's usually who we are. And as I look around in here, that is the group that I see. You know, memory. Oh, the older we get, memory just came, seems to slide by. We walk into a room ten times. We can't remember why. We can't find our glasses and they're on top of our head. We can't find our cell phone. We're talking on it. Ah, I tell you what, memories, but you give us some throwback music from, oh, from the years that we knew, oh, yeah, and we can belt it out. So if you got to grow old, you might as well grow bold. And I say solid gold. I know that you can finish these for me. My baloney has a first name. Give me a break, give me a break. Sometimes you feel like a nut. I don't want to grow up. The best part of waking up. I knew it! You are that generation that we grew up smoking candy cigarettes. 
Now, some of you younger ones are probably saying, what in the world? Candy cigarettes? We played Red Rover, Red Rover. Let Tom Selleck come over. That's who we are. We remember those days of sliding down hot metal slides. Burn the hide off our backside. We also remember the days of riding bikes all day long barefoot. I mean barefoot, and we would take those curves 90 to nothing. We were, we were tough. The bottom of our feet felt like leather. And so as we were taking those curves fast and furious, all of a sudden our big toe would slip off the pedal. We were so tough it would cauterize it immediately. That's who we were. You know, we used to, we didn't have plastic playgrounds. We had playgrounds that were metal. We had playgrounds with seesaws that were real tall. And we would seesaw and somebody would jump off and make us just go flying. That was just part of recess for us. That's who, we're, that's who I'm talking to. And let me tell you, it seems like just a moment ago, doesn't it? Because from diapers to dates to depends, it's a quick trip. It's a real quick trip. Oh, the days seem shorter and shorter and shorter. But I can remember when I was younger and the days seemed so long. Yes, and now time just flies by just like that. But don't underestimate the power of the old school gals. <laughs> but you know, an old school gal will say something like this. Let's say that somebody's sitting a little too close to you. You're at the airport, you're in a place like this, and, or a theater. And there's all kinds of places that people could sit. And they choose to sit right beside you. Well, this is all you got to do. You look straight ahead. You don't look at them. And you say, did you bring the money? <laughs> you don't laugh. And you don't look at them. They're going to say, what? And you're going to say, did you bring the money? They are long gone lightning flash speed. That's how you take care of that problem. Because you see, people my age, we've been creative for a very long time. Very long time. But one of the things we definitely know is we want to live life kicked up a notch. And we want to do it from here on out. I love laughing with women over the age of 40. We laugh completely different than you youngins. We laugh so hard, we have tears running down our legs. <laughs> totally different ball game. But you know, Mama said there would be days like this. She did. She also said this. My mama told me. That's right. She also said what goes around. Because I said. Money don't grow on. Quit crying or I'll give you. You can get glad in the same pants. And then there's this one. I brought you into this world and... Look how loud y'all got on that. I always say this. Texas women are somewhere between the Proverbs 31 woman and Medea. <laughs> we are crazy. How many of you deal with difficult people in your life? For those of you who didn't raise your hand, it's you. Because if you couldn't think of anybody, if you could not think of anybody, it's got to be you. You know, when it, whenever the holidays roll around, you know, Father's Day's coming up, and there'll probably be a lot of people at the house. Mother's Day just passes by. My mama said, you know, for big gatherings like that, because I come from a big family, she said, what I really need is a Prozac salt lick right outside the front door. <laughs> and everybody has to lick the Prozac salt lick before they go in the house. 
<coughs> I'm telling you, Southern folks, we're a breed of our own. And you know what else? There is something about friends. <coughs> we can make each other look so much younger by laughing together, being together. Life is what we make of it. you know that? Life is what we make of it. We can make believe. We can make memories. We can make a mess. We can make up our mind. We can make an entrance. Sometimes we can make up for lost time. But what we want to do today is make a difference with the words that we say when we leave this place so that people will see Jesus in us. We started strong, we're going to stay strong, now let's finish strong. Because now that we've gotten past the silly part, let me say this part. Laughter is kind of like a windshield wiper. It doesn't stop the rain, but it allows us to keep going, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. It makes us temporarily forget some of the things that we've gone through. Because I'm going to be the first to tell you, the battle may be raging around us, but it does not have to rage in us. And 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is of the world. And the world is hitting at us from all sides. Wherever we are, God is near. He's near. And many of you came in here last night. You came in here again this morning. You were frazzled. You were frustrated. You're fatigued. You're overcommitted, overloaded. You're overwhelmed. And you really just want to jump overboard. Because life right now is so hard. I want to remind you that even if you've been burned out, cheated on, lied to, robbed and scammed. Even if you feel like your souls have been beat on and your hearts have been broken. That 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says we are hard pressed on every side. But we are not crushed. We're confused. But we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. So whatever you are going through, Jesus will get you through that. And some of you are going through some really tough times. I want you to watch this video. And as you watch it, I want you to remember this year, maybe last year, you begin running the race with endurance, and you were doing really, really good. I mean, you had dreams, you had goals, you were on a mission, and people were saying, man, they're going to succeed, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a detour hit, and it took you down to your knees. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a relationship that went south. Maybe it was a marriage disaster. Maybe it was a diagnosis that you never expected, but life kept going anyway. Maybe it was a death of a loved one, a spouse, a child. But when you knew Jesus, only Jesus, you could get back up. You weren't running as fast as you were, but you could still run this race with endurance in that forward motion. And what God's going to do for you is He's going to bring somebody up beside you to hold you up when you cry, to encourage you when you are so discouraged, to let you weep and wail on their shoulder while they pet your hair. Just like Moses, Moses went into battle and God said, keep, it, keep the staff up high. And if it slips, the Amalekites are going to take the, the wind, not the Israelites. And so he started strong, just like you. And then all of a sudden, life got hard, and his arms got tired, and he got weak, and it just started falling. And God said, Aaron, her, get up beside him, pull him back up. Remind him where his strength comes from. Remind him that he can do all things through Christ who gives him strength. The same thing that God reminds you of. Remind them that greater is he that is in them than he that is of the world. 
remind them that Psalm 41 says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. He turned to me and heard my cry. And he lifted me up out of the pit of despair. Whatever you are going through, many of you were wiping tears during that. And I know it's hard. Whatever course you're running right now, don't think that God has ever abandoned you. And don't think that his eyes are not on you. And that he doesn't hear you. He does. And I firmly believe that he weeps for you. And he holds you in the palm of his hand. And he says, do not fear. I am with you. Always. Always. What we have to do is we have to crave Christ more than we crave revenge. And sometimes that is so difficult to crave Christ more than we crave revenge. But if we are craving revenge, if we are more into being bitter than better, we're going to spin our wheels and we're going to waste a whole lot of time. We don't have time to waste. Because we don't know how much time we have. And we don't want to just rest in peace. We've got to live in peace. So don't quit. You continue to run this race with endurance. No matter what is coming at you, God will take care of you. Don't quit. Quit's a four-letter word. And I think we should totally remove it from our vocabulary. We must learn how to conquer quit. Let us not become weary in doing good. For in the proper time, we will reap a harvest. If we just don't quit, don't quit, my friends. Sometimes God takes a long time to do something suddenly. But the impossible is always possible with God. I saw some of you write that down, so I'm going to say it again. Sometimes God takes a long time to do something suddenly. Some of you have been praying for somebody for a long time. You continue to bombard heaven with that person's name. And you continue to believe that God is wooing them to his side. Don't you give up. And don't you quit. And you've got to conquer quit. Tammy, how do I conquer quit? Well, that means that you cannot quit when things don't turn out the way you wanted them to. That means you cannot quit praying when the answers aren't coming in in your timetable. You cannot quit pursuing the dream and simply flee to the familiar. You cannot quit trying because it feels like it's no longer worth it. You can't quit doing because you think you're too old. You can't quit caring for people because they get on your last nerve. It seems that we have become a part of the world where they have disposable people, disposable friendships, disposable family members. There is no trash in Jesus' eyes. Mm. There is only treasure. That means you don't quit when you get angry or when you get upset. That means you don't quit because you messed up. What you do is you grab hold of the Messiah. I think it's spelled M-E-S-S-I-A-H for a reason. There's a Messiah for every mess we get ourselves into. And we wonder sometimes, Lord, I don't remember the last time you answered a prayer for me. Can I just tell you, the enemy loves to steal your memories of every single time that God was there for you. So, in 1997, which for me was a moment ago, in 1997, a woman told me, she said, Tammy, every time that you, think, that you know that God has done something, He's answered a prayer. He's moved. 
You can feel his hand. Begin to write it in the back of your Bible. She said, and then every single time that you think that he doesn't hear you, see you, love you, know you, you can pick up the back of that Bible and you can read time after time how he has come through. I know that people have phones that they use their Bible for, but you can't do this with that. And you need to have it written down every single time that God moved because otherwise Satan's going to try his hardest to move those memories right out of the way so you will feel forgotten. And, you know, there's something about Texas women. We definitely love a good garage sale. I myself like to leave early on speaking engagements on the way because, hey, if I see a garage sale, I'm breaking. <laughs> Even if I'm in high heels. And I see Bibles in garage sales all the time. But I firmly believe that when God calls me home, this worn out Bible is not going to be in a garage sale for 50 cents or a dollar. And if you do put Bibles in a garage sale, give them away for heaven's sake. Let people have God's word. Because I know that my children know that their names are back here. And so instead of fighting over this or that, that the world says is valuable, I pray that they will fight over the word and how God moved in their mama's life every time she prayed for them. I encourage you to do that because there is something about that that the enemy cannot take from you when you open it up and you begin to, to, to pray it out. You know what? Satan is coming to you. I like how Lisa said it when she said that he's at your throat. Satan is like a buzzard. He picks us apart one painful piece at a time. But God can put you together every single piece back together. And you can be so graciously broken and be more beautiful than ever once the hands of Jesus, only Jesus, when he puts you back together. So if life seems to have you going in a downward spiral, Jesus can put spring in your step and spring you back into action. I promise you that. Some of you have scabs from painful times. The difference between a scab and a scar is that a scab can be removed over and over and over. And that pain just revisits again and again and again. But a scar, that's a permanent reminder of what God has got you through. Ah. And you can't, the devil can't jerk it off anymore because it's a reminder of how God got you through. Because sometimes we need to stop being angry at God for what has been allowed to happen to us and be grateful he's given us the strength to get through it. Amen. Because you have survived 100% of your hardest days, my friends, you have survived it. So get your heart back in it and stand on the solid rock and boldly declare that you will not live your life by the mistakes of your past, but you will live your life by the promise found in his word. Yes. And then you march forward and you run this race with endurance. And God is going to tell you to do some things that may just sound so strange, just like he did Noah. And all the characters, the Bible people, especially in Genesis. He told them to do things that just didn't seem right. I want you to think about Joshua when he marched around Jericho. God said for him to do it seven times. You know he was thinking, Lord, they are thinking we're a little bit crazy off in there. 
What if he would have quit on the sixth time? He didn't quit. When he heard the voice of God, he obeyed. God is only waiting for you to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. So as I land this plane, I want you to always remember that the one who throws the most verbal punches will never win. I've certainly thrown my share of verbal punches in my life. I never once won with them. We must pick our battles. I learned a long time ago that I didn't have to accept every invitation to a fight. Sometimes we got to get a grip on our lip, girls, and just stay quiet. We got to stop walking around smelling like smoke from every single person who's burned us. And then there comes that time when we got to try. We got to, well, we not try. We must give up trying to get even with every person who's ever done us wrong and get even with all these people who have done us right. Yeah. Don't focus on the negative. Keep your eyes on the prize and run the race with endurance. And some of you say, you know, it's so hard, though. I get so ang angry. You add one letter, D, to anger and you have danger. Some of you say, but you just, you don't understand. I really deal with depression. You rearrange the letters in depression and you get the words I pressed on. I pressed on. Some of you will say, but I'm one person. What can one person do? What can one person do? Let me tell you the power of one. One gunman in a church. One rebel voice in a crowd. One cancer-laden cell. One bad decision. One missing chromosome. One missing child on your watch. One single dose of meth. Yes. One bully on the playground. One high five. One praying woman. One Jesus. I don't know who told you that you would not make it. I don't know who told you that you could not take it. I don't know who told you that it was time to quit. But my Jesus says, wait. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Cemeteries are filled, my friends. Cemeteries are filled with grudges that were never surrendered. Books that were never written. Speeches that were never spoken. Friendships that were never made. Degrees that were never earned. Classes that were never taught. Songs that were never sung. Hugs that were never felt. Hands that were never held. Bibles that were never read. Laughter that was never shared. Don't die with buried treasure. What is God telling you to do? What kind of race is he asking you to run? Inspire before you expire. Tell people about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Maybe you've heard a whole lot of talk about his word, about the power that's in the name of Jesus. Maybe you have heard about all this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Jesus is my rock and that's how I roll. I stand on the firm foundation. You know it all, but you don't know him. The last thing, my friends, that you want to hear is depart from me. I never knew you. Jesus is the best thing you can ever know. 
So if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I know you did this last night, but maybe today God has moved and the Spirit has moved upon you to grab hold of the garment and never let go. To ride this life out, holding on to Jesus. And then maybe you just need somebody to pray for you. Just to um, be there for you. If, if God is moving you, um, will you two ladies come up here? Stand right here. If God is moving you to grab hold of Jesus and and, and you don't know what to do or how to do it. Or if you just need somebody to bombard heaven with your name, these ladies will do it. If you just need to, to come up here and just say, take it off. Or if you just want to say something, if you want to surrender the secret, secrets will make you sick. Maybe you've had a secret for so long and it's made you bitter, not better. Let us pray with you. Let us hold you and let us bombard heaven with your name. Our most gracious heavenly Father, Lord, if there is anybody in here today who needs to be prayed for, prayed over, prayed through, let them come up. And if there's anybody in here today, Lord, who doesn't know the Messiah, who doesn't understand what it means to grab hold of the garment and have the blood of Jesus Christ on you. Then, Father, I ask you to pull them towards you right now at this very moment, and they will surrender. And for the rest of their life, they will turn their eyes upon Jesus. They will look at his beautiful face and they will know that every day they live, they are one day closer to seeing Jesus face to face, touching him, listening to him. But they can have it here now. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you, God, for creating Jesus so that we can move forward and not live in the backward. And thank you, Lord, for every woman who's in this place today. If you need to be prayed for, this is the time to come up. And if you don't, just reach over. Touch the woman beside you. Let's just pray for each other now. Just to, and if you two ladies will come together, I'm going to use y'all for that too. Look to the person on your left. And I don't know what they're going through, and you don't either, but pray for them right now. Nobody's going to leave out of here not prayed for. Pray for the woman on your left. Pray for the woman on your right. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I lift them up and bring them now to you, Lord. I ask you to anoint them, Lord. Continue this anointing from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Let them march forward, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is just something about that name. Age gracefully? I think not. Let's age boldly, courageously, seizing life with both hands and riding it out with a skip in our step, with joy in our heart, with a sparkle in our eye. And on the day that God calls us home, on the day that God calls us home, let's slide 
got into home base. Woo! Weary, tired, worn out. But we didn't give up and we didn't give in. We gave it all we had. We didn't throw in the towel. We picked it up and wiped the sweat from our brow. And as we look into the eyes of our Savior, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you. I just want to tell you, if you've got that secret that you didn't surrender, if you've got that secret that's making you sick and it's keeping you from living life fully alive, get a card back there for any of us. Email us. We will pray for you. I promise you, we will not forget you. We will pray for you.